Well, hello, David. Thank you very much for being here on our show today. Now, we know that you have a deep connection with, with Vietnam and you have been here many times. So can you tell us how many times you have been to Vietnam up until now? Well, I, I lost count long ago, but it's probably around 40 or 50 times. It's, uh, my first trip in 69, 70 was courtesy of Richard Nixon. And then I skipped about 20 years and came back in 1987. <coughs> my first trip back. And since 87, I've come once or twice a year, every year, sometimes three times, depending on the projects that I'm working on. So if you add that all up for 25 years, it probably comes to close to 50 times. 50 times? That's a lot. What keeps you coming back to Vietnam? Well, it's the work. It's, uh, the, the first trip in 87 was out of curiosity. I came with John McAuliffe, who runs a an organization called, it used to, be, used to be called the U.S. Indochina Reconciliation Project. Now it's called the Fund for Reconciliation and Development, I think. And he works primarily with Cuba. I'll always coming back here next week. Um, the trip with him was just amazing because he loves Vietnam and his passion for Vietnam just came across to the group. It was a group of academics that he had put together. And I fell in love with the country through, through John's eyes. Um, so I, I had brought some paintings with me that I had done after I came back in 1970, after I came back to America. I did a series of paintings about Vietnam, mostly about Vietnamese children. And I kept them in a drawer at my house. And I thought that maybe someday I would have an opportunity to give them to the Vietnamese people. They seem to belong here, not in America. What do you hope to bring to the Vietnamese audience with the exhibition this time? There's two bodies of my work that are in the show. There's older lithographs that are sort of based on, some on Vietnam experiences, the children again, uh, others on uh, sort of abstract motifs and some stylized uh, Matisse or Picasso uh, influences. So there's a bunch of those prints. But the most recent work, the puzzle pieces, are a bigger challenge, I think, for the public. And I, I did them knowing I wanted to show them in Vietnam because the subject is primarily Vietnam or primarily war. And I, I hope they're seen as an anti-war statement. Um, they're, they could be misinterpreted, but I hope they're seen as it's certainly questioning whether war should be a solution to anything or not. And hopefully telling people that war is not the solution, whether it's Vietnam or Afghanistan or Iraq or Korea or Germany or anywhere. I became a pacifist when I left Vietnam in 1970. You have published a very well-known book, which is a photo collection of Ho Chi Minh. So can you tell us a little bit more about that book? Yeah, that was a wonderful project. I had done it, a book about Ho Chi Minh with a British author named Charles Fenn, which was an artist book. So when I moved here on my Fulbright, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was kind of redo that book as a trade book, a $20 trade book, instead of a $5,000 artist book, and make it available to Vietnamese and Americans. So I asked Lady if she would rewrite Charles Fenn's text. Well, she ended up totally rewriting it, I mean, sort of ignoring Charles Fenn's text and putting all of her research into the book, uh, which was wonderful. You know, it's very solid research. And I redesigned the book as a, as a trade book that we printed, we published through Tan Yen Publishing House here in Hanoi. And we printed 2,000 in English and 2,000 in Vietnamese. And the book was enormously popular. We, we did television and radio and newspapers, and we sold all the books in a couple of months. How did you find all the photos of Ho Chi Minh? 
it, it was difficult. Uh, when I looked in America for pictures of Ho Chi Minh, I found almost nothing. When I started in 2000 and 95, uh, to uh, do research. I found one, one little book by David Halberstam, who was a very good writer, but it was a little hundred page book on Ho Chi Minh. That was the only book available in the United States of, on Ho, about Ho Chi Minh in English. It was difficult, as I said, I couldn't find any in America, so when I came here, there weren't bookstores, very many bookstores in 95, but there were girls uh, on Trang Tien Street in the alleyways, there were several young girls who were very entrepreneurial, and they were selling magazines and books. And they, I don't know where they got them, but I got to know one of the girls quite well. I think it was a long time ago, but I think her name was Lan. And I would, every time I would come to Vietnam, I would say, look for books with pictures of Ho Chi Minh and his life and Vietnamese art and culture. Anything you can find, I'll buy it. And so for six months, she would collect all these books. And I would come back to Vietnam and I'd go to her first thing, get off the plane and go see her. She'd give me a stack of books and magazines and, that she had gathered and she'd charge me some small fee. That's where most of the pictures came from. The, um, the only other place was, of course, with ladies research. A lot of the pictures she brought was because of her connections to libraries and, and other resources. So it was a combination of the girls in the alley and their research and pictures and Lady Borton's research and pictures. So. These are some of the photos of President Ho Chi Minh that David Thomas managed to collect in his book Ho Chi Minh, A Portrait. Applying years of experience as a graphic artist, the beautiful layout was designed by David Thomas himself. With his unique and rare photographs, documents and postage stamps, the book is a perfect tool for teaching the younger generations of both Vietnam and the United States about the legendary figure Ho Chi Minh. Can you tell us how you started your passion for art and drawing in particular? It goes back to 60 years ago probably when I was a little boy in Maine. Um, the, the one thing that I seemed to excel at, even in elementary school, was art and, and love to do. You know. I, I remember elementary school, they hated a lot of it because it was academic and I'm not a, a traditional academic, I'm a, an artist. So my, my brain is oriented to the creative side and um, that doesn't fit in elementary school. They're trying to get you disciplined and lined up in your chairs and the math and, the, and all that you have to learn. But I always rebelled against it. And um, when I graduated from high school, I decided art school was probably the answer for me rather than the university. And I, and I think I was right. Um, then I was drafted and sent here and then came back and finished my master's degree and taught for 25 years. So art has always been the central part of my life. Do you have any long-term goal that is connected to Vietnam in the future? Well, I hope to keep making art until the day I leave this planet. But uh, my wife and I love to travel. There's a, there's a goal of moving back here for six months to a year. I think it wouldn't be the, like the last time we were here for two years, um, but this time I think we could do six months or a year. We'd miss the grandchildren and the children, but so there's um, travel is in our future, living here is in our future, working here and making art. Well, thank you very much, David, for your time on our show today. We appreciate the efforts that you have spent to connect the two countries, Vietnam and the United States, and we hope that you are going to continue your great work. Thank you very much.